the new PTR server for Season 20 is live and we have our first look at all the new units for Season 20 Alexander. In this video I'm going to be going over the new units abilities and stats as well as my first impressions from the three test PTR games I had today. So our first new unit is the tier 3 slinger. These guys are classified as special archers so importantly you won't be able to use doctrines for normal archer units on these guys so probably going to be using mostly hero unit damage things like that that you can apply to any units. Their leadership is 80, so pretty low leadership for these guys, actually. Their health is 3,000, so they're a little bit squishier than hey, other tier 3 range units like Janissaries at 3,800 and Feathered Crossbowmen yeah. at around 4,000. No no their damage, worries. their blunt armor penetration is 1636 and blunt damage at 1,500, um, which is quite a bit lower than some other units. So, for example, Janissaries 3,000 and 2,800, but they are blunt damage, and most units have lower blunt armor, so their damage in a lot of ways is comparable, and they will do better against armored and uh, shield units than probably a lot of other ranged units will. The gods have abandoned they also have 36 strength, so they have 36 units in their troop, uh, whereas most other ranged units He's have so a lot less than that. Nomcon's at 32, I Janissaries at 20, Volvoys at 12, so their unit is very large, which is kind of a theme you'll see across all the units for this season. So yeah, I think that's everything to call out for the high-level overview of this unit, so now let's jump into the unit's abilities. So for our Slinger, we have three main abilities. You have your normal area attack, like most other ranged units, so you'll see that they have a quick windup and then they throw rocks at enemies. Their two ability will be a frontal targeted bigger windup with increased damage and a dazing effect on enemies. You can hit your normal V attack to just let them attack at will. Their three ability will allow them to replenish their ammo by just picking up ammo from the ground. So you'll see them just do that here. So you'll pretty much never need to go back to supply for the most part with these guys, even though they do go through ammo pretty fast. Um, pretty decent damage. They do blunt damage, which is inter interesting. So better against shield units than um, most other ranged units. But from the testing, their damage seemed kind of mediocre against the higher tier units. So. We'll have to see if they buff their damage before the full release of this game, uh, or of this expansion, I mean. But yeah, I mean, a cool unit. I love Slinger units, so it's cool to see. Um, I think they just might need a damage buff, but they do only cost 80 leadership, so they might be a unit to take even if their damage isn't great, so we'll have to see. But yeah, that's the three Slinger unit abilities. So overall, my thoughts on Slingers so far, they were a little underwhelming to me. I do love the unit design. I mean, I think Slingers are really cool, but they are very squishy, even with their big troop. They do just die so fast to other ranged units or other ranged heroes that are shooting them down. Their damage is okay against the lower tier units, but I did find their damage was a little bit low, and I think I've seen other people have the same feedback. Um, they are supposed to do blunt damage, but I found their damage against shields just wasn't great against the higher tier shield units. So I think these guys will probably be used in the blue lock meta, but I can't really see them being used after that. Uh, but we'll have to see. They do only cost 80 leadership, so they can slot in like an alchemist or unit like that does. That being said, given their low damage, I'm just not sure that they're gonna fill a niche well enough to actually be included. To me, their current design feels like more of a support unit, something like a mini flamer or a mini Zakalian militia is supposed to do, but they just don't fulfill that role well enough to me to make enough of an impact in a game where people actually take them. So I don't really see them being used unless they get a pretty significant buff to their damage, and that would also maybe come with a leadership bump. So I'm not sure how they're going to balance that. I think they either need to buff their damage and block break, or make them fill more into that support role, maybe give them like a knockdown even with a longer windup on their 2 ability. So I'm not sure what they're going to do with that, but I do hope they make one of those changes. Otherwise I think it will kind of just be a fun unit in blue meta, but I don't really see it actually being used after that at all. So for our tier 4 unit, we have the Companion Cavalry. These guys are classified as a Special Cavalry, so importantly not a Lancer or a Melee Cav, which is important to know for their Doctrine usage, so they can't use a lot of the normal Melee or Lancer Cav Doctrines. As far as their attributes, they have decent health, around 9000. This is comparable with the unit like the Dagger Axe Lancers here. We can see Dagger Axe are a little bit higher at 10,000. Human Lancer is a little bit higher than that, so kind of on par with a lot of the other Tier 4 Cav. Um, pretty good piercing and slashing damage. Importantly to note, they have both of these because they wield the spear and shield separately. 
They have 25 strength, 205 leadership, and they're very fast. So 9.8 speed versus 7.5 speed of Dagger Axe. Dagger Axe also costs more leadership, 245 and 18 strength. Whereas these guys only cost 205 leadership and have 25 strength. So pretty good comparisons versus a really good unit like Dagger Axe Lancers. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into this unit's abilities and show them off. So for the Companion Cav, we essentially have four abilities. So the three ability here is essentially a passive buff, as far as I can tell. The PTR buffs are bugs, so I can't see the exact text. But as far as I can tell, it's a passive buff, so you can use this in combination with your other skills to increase their damage. They'll essentially have a sword and a spear. So by default, they can use their one ability. I'll show it off here. Their one ability will essentially be his frontal charge ending in a spear thrust that does pretty good damage. I'm going to bring him back real quick and I'll hit my three ability. Then their two ability is pretty similar to their one ability except it does basically extra damage and it will also destroy their spear. So here's their two ability. They'll charge in and then they'll end in the spear thrust. So you see it does a lot more damage. Um, and that spear thrust will destroy their spear. You can get it back get going. by going to the supply point. So I'll take them back to the supply point here. And you'll see they get their spear back. If I do this again, you'll see they'll destroy their spear again. Now I'm back to my sword. So from what the text detail says, it says the sword does less damage um, than the spear. So you'll want to use that spear skill sparingly. Um, but the sword ability does still do decent damage from what I could tell. Um, and then once you have the sword, you still have a one ability that does extra damage. So that's your fourth ability. So just to show that real quick. So we use our two ability, we destroy our spears, and then now we're back to our sword and we can use our one ability in combination with our two ability here to use our sword attack. So we actually got a 10,000 crit there, so it still does quite a bit of damage. Oh, 20k crit there, that's insane. Yeah, some 20k crits. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, even with the sword, they're doing pretty good damage, so we'll have to see how that works in-game. Um, but yeah, that's the companion cav abilities. So my overall thoughts for the tier 4 companion cavalry is I think they're going to be pretty good. I don't think they're going to be completely oppressive. But from what I played, their damage is really good and their survivability and health is really good. So I do think they're going to be strong. Maybe the strongest tier 4 cav even. I think they could beat out Dagrax Lancers, another similar tier 4 cav. I think they might feel like a tier 4.5 cav um, during the current season. But I'm imagining they'll get a slight nerf or something eventually and probably be pretty similar to other tier 4 cav. Um, but yeah, really good damage and survivability. The one weird thing about them is their movement is really strange. They get stuck in a lot of quarters. They move super fast and they're actually really hard to control. Their formations are really bad. They're way too wide, so they'll get stuck in weird areas of the city. So it's really hard to get a clean frontal charge with them. But if you get a flanking charge around the back of a big blob of enemy units, you cause a ton of chaos because your cab just go everywhere. Um, but it is a little bit easier to control them if you just use the C hot key to make them follow you instead of trying to use the formations. That's probably your preferred formation, but it's just really hard to get them all in formation. So you'll have a lot of stragglers a lot of times, but even when you only have a few troops left, they're still getting kills. They're still surviving a surprisingly, a surprisingly long amount of time. So I think they will be used and they're going to be pretty good. And lastly, for our tier 5 unit, we have the Sunward Phalanx. So these guys are classified as a polearm, so important to note that for their doctrines. They can use all the classic polearm doctrines. In terms of their attributes, their health is 7,500, which is a little low compared to their comparable units like Fort Abrasios and Halberdier Sergeants. So these guys are both around 11k health, whereas these guys are about 4k less than that. So quite a bit less. They, they do have the shield and a block bar on them. So I would imagine with that, their health is kind of comparable to those units, but they are a tier five unit. So I imagine their health might go up a bit because a lot of people are saying they're a little bit squishy. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Important to note though, their strength is 40. So these guys are going to have the biggest troop in the game at 40 versus Fort Abrasu at 32 and how are you sergeants at only 26. Their leadership also isn't too bad. So 235 versus 290, so it's actually less than 300, which is not too bad. 
their speed is also pretty good. So 4.6 speed, which is uh, a little bit faster than Ford Brasio's at 3.8, and a little bit slower than Halberdy's Trigent's at 5. Um, and their damage is pretty good, so 2200 piercing armor pin and 1600 piercing damage versus 2000 and 1600, so a little bit more than Fortabrasios, but they also get the stab ability on their two, which I'll show off in a sec, which does really good damage. So yeah, that's kind of their attributes uh, rundown, so let's go ahead and take a look at their abilities. So for our Phalanx unit, we'll have three abilities. So they have their normal brace, and then if you hit one, you can actually advance forward, so they have a pretty good pushback on this. You can combine this with your two stab ability to do really good damage. Uh, this can one-shot units and heroes pretty easily. You have this three ability that makes them watch around you. I'm not totally sure how this is going to work out. It seems like it just helps them do extra damage around them, I guess. And kind of attack around them while standing in formation. So I'm not totally sure what that ability is meant to do, but that's kind of what it does there. Um, yeah, basically their main two abilities is advance and this stab ability. Cool thing is they can use their stab ability even in this F3 formation here. So I'll show that real quick. So you can get an F3 formation if you're being surrounded by Cav on the flanks. So this is really good against flanking charges from Cav. There's no flank to hit you from. And they can use their stab ability even from here. And then of course you can get back in your main formation. And I'll show you one more pretty cool thing. So you can advance forward. The cool thing is that you can also advance backwards. And they'll still keep their spears pointed frontwards. So if an enemy blob is advancing on you, you can just advance backwards like this and keep them being pushed back. So that is really cool. And you can just switch back and forth between those and combine those with your stab ability. So a very dynamic unit, very maneuverable. Um, I'm excited to try this one out once this uh, expansion actually releases. But yeah, that's all the Phalanx abilities here. And lastly, for my overall thoughts on the new Tier 5 Phalanx unit, I think this unit seems pretty solid. I think its main negative is it seems a little bit squishy. Its health at around 7,000 seems like it's a little bit too low for a tier 5 unit, and I've seen some other people in the feedback discord say similar things. Some people disagree, but I do think they're pretty squishy, especially in a territory war situation against flamers and things like that. I think they're going to get absolutely melted. So I think unless they bump up their health a little bit, they're not really going to be viable in territory wars, or at least they might be viable but not super strong and not meta defining but i do think in normal sieges they'll be pretty strong because you don't see that as much and obviously there's not as much coordination so i think in normal sieges you can really pub stomp with these guys if you just hold the choke point with them they're really fun for that for fighting in big blob fights i really like their advance ability their ability to both engage and disengage a big blob fight is really awesome their stab ability does a ton of damage you can basically one shot enemy heroes and a lot of enemy units with that they also have a pushback on their brace, which is really nice to keep units far away from them. I also really like their F3 formation, so that they're not able to be flanked. I think you could use that in combination with the F3 formation on the Imperial Spear Guards, and just hole up in an open field battle or an open area of a siege map. So you're basically holding them a position without being able to get flanked on any side, and I think that is going to be pretty strong. So I'm super excited about all these units, especially the new Tier 5 Phalanx unit. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you out there on the battlefield soon.